Shut up and sit down. from PS4 Pro. Man. Well, yeah. Uh, real quick, what do you guys think? You guys have both played The Last of Us. I'm assuming you both have since you're both PlayStation owners. What do you think? Is it? Is it... Filling up to your expectations. How did you feel after the first one? How do you feel this one is going to take you? Yeah, thoughts. Well, I thought it looks great. I mean, I love the fact that they added new mechanics like traversal and whatnot, and let alone being able to jump. I think it looked like you were able to jump. They said something about <laughs> jumping. <laughs> this is specifically said jumping. Yeah. <laughs> This is Bobby's like main necessity for this game. If you can't jump, it's over. Well, I, I no, it wouldn't be over. It's but... gonna be a huge letdown if, yeah. if you can't jump. But um, I love the the um implementation of suppressors as well, and like not making them like infinite use. Like they're just you know makeshift suppressors or whatever. I like the thing with the dog, how it is, uh, or dogs, where how they can pick up your scent and lead and lead the enemies to you, and um, and the the stealth, being able to hide in tall grass is really cool. Going prone, and the fact that if you're just if you're in tall grass, just prone in tall grass, enemies can still find you if they're close enough. Mm -hmm. I like I appreciate that realism, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. Well, and the way they framed that was almost as if it's like oh if your front end's in tall grass but your ass is out of tall grass like <laughs> they're gonna see that it's like yeah uh circumstantial like on on how like how dense the foliage and how much like of your body is actually being obscured and stuff so that's pretty cool also the they showed one new enemy the uh shambler or something uh it was it looked similar to the bloater just like yeah yeah evolved i guess somewhere generic, somewhere in between tank zombie yeah yeah but with um, that really annoying like spewing out burning gas thing yeah. yeah yeah well i mean i'm trying to think of part one there really was only like what like three or four in terms of variety runners stalkers clickers and bloaters so four i mean it was a new ip at the time too so they put a lot of work into a lot of things but a little more enemy variety will go a long way for sure yeah and i mean the shamblers fit in and they kind of like i don't know in my mind contradicted themselves but it's like totally minor but with the uh you know the shambler in a, like a lore standpoint it's like oh those are just like clickers that have just like their fungus has just like grown so so deep you know and just mm -hmm. like kept growing oh well, yeah it's all the game. stages that yeah, it goes right. in um but then they were like oh and there's still like a majority of like runners like the majority of enemies will be runners i was like ah, yeah. it'd be cooler if there was like less enemies but more of the like the cycles of these infections have like yeah it would on. kind of from a lore standpoint maybe make sense too because like we've there's more time has passed and this thing is a right, pro progressive right. disease so you would think there would be more of the further progressed forms present right. that's what i was but, trying to say but well yeah. you have to think that since the the bloaters were always super rare it was always at like a very like climactic moment yeah so they were speak. like a mini boss um yeah yeah um so you and those newer ones the the shamblers they're lower in i in evolution i don't know how else to put it so you got to think that those things might be even more common than the bloaters were and then right. isn't there there's still another another enemy yeah the or, one uh, that, that they the they one didn't they didn't show. reveal yeah i wonder if there's any hints to what that enemy could be in the leaks i haven't like really dug yeah. through the leaks but 
Because that could be gonna, that so. could be somewhere between the shambler and the bloater. I'm assuming that the bloater is like maximum infected. Oh no, I think right. I think they have to go bigger with that one they didn't show. It has to go past the bloater. I'm thinking we're yeah, gonna yeah. see like a Gears of War berserker like kind of level thing, you know? Nemesis yeah. kind of level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, like there may be only a handful of these in this game world kind of thing. Yeah, definitely more variety in the uh, the infected enemies, but it's cool that there's more variety in the human enemies too, with the factions functioning differently. They said certain ones yeah. focus on stealth, certain ones focus on stalking you or hunting you down. I'm sure there's yes. probably one in there that's just like paramilitary, like gung-ho. I mean, they've always yeah, been good at, like, making the enemies, the human enemies, feel like real people. Like you said, they're always going to say yes to stuff, and, like, the things they say yes to usually just make it way more brutal and seem way more visceral and real, you know, the combat. Like, when you had that conversation with that girl at that point. But I also noticed there's, like, constant... Uh, Naughty Dog kind of pioneered the whole, like, constant... Um dialogue from your protagonist during gameplay where they like talk to themselves but in this game i'm noticing it almost seems like they're applying that to enemies too the enemies are constantly talking to one another uh discussing yeah. what's going on when you grab one of them they call out to the others and like say like you know don't do it or just shoot them and or whatever like I heard so many names like they're, yeah. they're going for that like we're giving every enemy a name like it's, yeah you're taking a life kind of vibe. yeah i think that's you know exactly what they're doing i think they actually probably have a name for every enemy in the I, game they probably do that which uh, is insane and they probably thought out a dozen ways which each scenario would play out and mm -hmm. like all to give it that atmosphere and i think that's one thing that naughty dog nails um right here uh, this is something else um the training books or upgrade books that mm -hmm. wasn't that's a new uh mechanic isn't it i think oh, wait, no, so there? no you found something yeah like, i'm trying to remember how you upgraded your health and stuff God, there were, well, you did collect so like long. pills or something. Yeah, you that took you pills. Would... <laughs> Wasn't it? Wait, I feel like there was books you would pick up that would like increase the length of your shivs or whatever, like the the health of your shivs. Uh, I don't know if there's something a little different with it in in this one. Yeah. Um, but I was happy to see that, and also the customization of weapons. Like you weren't able to attach scopes to rifles no, or anything you just yeah, able to, like, like the base weapons right i think you could like increase capacity and stuff and that was about it um, and like handling and yeah weapon it was sweat or whatever yeah it was almost all just statistical uh increases you know moving numbers up and down i mean a big thing too is going to be how scarce things are we were talking about that suppressor and getting multiple shots out of it there could be another what was it grounded difficulty was the highest one i think yes. on the first game yeah there could be another one where you know you only get one shot out of that suppressor and you're only going to get that suppressor like twice in the whole game you know um i'm curious if since it would that was like a makeshift one if you can craft them yeah she or, crafted it right there components yeah oh, she did yeah she did she crafted that one. Oh, i missed that yeah it was really fast it's like the crafting is very similar to uh the first one like the, she just pulls her backpack down the meter fills up and it's crafted within like yeah, two seconds yeah. i was just thinking um graphically it looked really good you yeah. know like going back to the how the water looked that looked yeah. really nice so the, seeing the reflection on the underside of the surface yeah what i want to touch on real quick since i am not a playstation owner um so what i took from this was um atmosphere which naughty dog nails all the time mm -hmm. um but that was definitely aided by the revamped engine the that they and talked about that had and i mean what i saw you had there's really three things but two things mostly and it was the water simulations and the lighting um mm -hmm. and then you can you can throw in there the vistas and the scale of some of these environments as well but you wrap all that up in, into the Naughty Dog 
uh, atmosphere package and you get something like this. And yeah. like, it, you know, each one of those frames told so much of a story just of, within the environment. So mm -hmm. like hats off to the environmental designers and the level builders for, for this because it looks amazing. What I'm really taking it on is the, the reflections here, which have to be some sort of simulated RTX going on here. Yeah, and the lighting, the lighting reflecting off the water at that one point, like that one spotlight had a direct reflection off the water. So yeah, really cool. And even in this whole environment here, it's hard to see on my Hangout, but uh, I, during the time, during the, the state of play, you could see all, the, all of these objects are reflecting in the water. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everything. Yeah, in, in real time. Yeah, I mean, was she a PSP here? I was it trying to figure like out. I was PSP. like, is it a right Vita there. or a PSP? I think it's a Vita. Uh, yeah, because yeah. she's playing Hotline Miami, and I think you can play that on the Vita. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think the variety in combat and stuff is a big thing. I mean, they when we look at this, they didn't really talk too much about story here. They, they didn't really talk about story at all here, right? Am I missing something? They gave like like in the beginning they gave like a like a general synopsis of yeah mostly of, what we already song. knew in the beginning with that scene when she was with the other girl yeah I don't even remember what they yeah. were talking about it was so general that it was it, yeah it, it, it yeah, was less it was less plot though and more just like characterization which you know yeah. helped us which kind of fed it into the gameplay thing here where it was kind of lending itself to her state of mind as she's going through all of this so they didn't really exactly. talk about plot stuff but yeah we focused mainly on gameplay which you know you gotta admit there's definitely more variety to gameplay in this um one thing that i liked too was the fact that in the first game i felt like we kind of had like this is the infected area and this is where you fight people and then you yep. switch back to this is where you're gonna fight some infected and like they very rarely crossed over but i think they kind of made a point to show us like yeah no there's gonna be um parts where like that part where it's in the dark parts where yeah. you're gonna have to deal with both and you can like set them against each other and uh yeah play off that so that's exciting too because now we have all this variety and enemy types and stuff uh and you know new ai and all that all this attention to detail and then you throw them together you know three parties yeah. at the same time yeah um, and then specifically mentioning that that subway scene or that under like that metro area yeah uh, you know you have the factions fighting against each other going off with that the lighting in that dank like railroad tunnel oh, poor uh, dog. it's just it's awesome yeah let's talk about the dog real quick <laughs> i mean there isn't much to say other than god damn it it's gonna be really hard for me to to do that that was a very intense um audio cue yeah i mean again they make shit feel real and i don't yeah. want killing a dog to feel real hey it's just put yourself in her shoes man like i know it's like she had to do it but um, does she i think that's she almost also... that dog she didn't really have to i mean yeah it would have kept sniffing All her out this, but... though, like her her like we're getting into the now we're getting into character and yeah we're getting yeah. into ellie's character a little bit um and how hardened she's become well yeah, yeah and how kind of cold-hearted she's she is in this whole demo like she is yeah. just like the executioner like yeah. she was she, born into it you know no no i don't know i think she I was think but the first game took place 20 years after it started and she was only less i don't know 10 yeah, but How when old Joel she found her, uh, she wasn't like she was older than ten, I think. But she, maybe like thir yeah, she, she was wasn't like over or twenty years old. Or no, 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 <laughs> no. So she was I, literally born into the apocalypse. Is, is yeah, but or maybe she's, sixteen. I don't remember. She seems driven by something. Like mm -hmm. she seems well, angry at times. Uh, like, I haven't. I haven't read the spoilers, but what seems heavily implied, and this is purely speculation on my part, but what seems heavily implied from the trailers is that she loses her love interest pretty early on um, yeah. to yeah. obviously violence by another party. Um, well, we if also, that's what yeah, does we happen. Haven't, but. 
we didn't get to see the love interest outside of the trailer until this, where we did see her for a brief moment out mm-hmm. in the world with you. Uh, and she, she capped a zombie for you. So, yeah, but I think that's going to be like early game. And I think that's almost going to yeah. be like a, I think uh, Ellie's going to be re-traumatized as like the shit she saw in left behind the, the expansion for the first game. Um, I yeah. didn't really follow that one. Well, I great. mean, pretty straightforward she what i'm speculating happens in this game is pretty much what happened in that so oh, right 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 right, right. Okay, so yeah, to have a, that she had a little friend yeah yeah um i mean yeah her like um discussion about her sexuality kind of was only hypothetical or or speculative in uh the base game it really wasn't like right. confirmed until it's really um, like upfront or needed. Like I'm just saying, like the in the first in the base game, it wasn't really like. Oh she, yeah, she was younger, so it was well, like it was, more, I, it was Joel's story. It was yeah. Joel shepherding her, like. Yeah, that's uh, why I think they handled that the right way, because like they didn't need to shoehorn it in or put it to the front. Like, look, we have diversity in our game, you know. Like in the know. first part of The Last of Us, it really only became relevant in the expansion. Uh, to yeah. further develop Ellie, which might have been really forward thinking on their part to the second game when they're, you know, making her the lead. I mean, really the only other thing uh, that popped out at me, and it's minor by comparison, I guess, but um, the fact that they have like the licensed soundtrack um, yeah. and how I appreciated that, because that does make a difference. Like it, it's one of the most effective ways for us to be like, wait, this is like our world you know this isn't like a it is a fictional world but it's you know it's not like another world another dimension another thing like this is a fictional version of our world we're hearing our music it's just a really effective way to accomplish that you know the only other way is you come across a mcdonald's that's dilapidated or whatever and it's like you know that's how you ground it in you know the same universe in which we live iconic landmarks or something yeah i think that's where like tommy's little settlement and stuff is supposed to be at this point pretty much we know you're starting out there um I mean, they've kept Joel a big mystery. We don't really know if he's still there, if he's gone out into the world, how he's dealing with, you know. That was a good soundbite that we got, though, with him saying, like, I was just supposed to go in, hand her over to the Fireflies, and that would be it, you know? So, like, he's clearly dealing with that choice that he made, which he he has to. Like, that's huge. He basically condemned the human race to further suffering. Then again, we'd have no part two. Yeah, and that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. I just want to say, if they kill Joel, Joel in this, <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very upset. Like, sure, it could, it makes for a good story. Yeah, but I don't need my heart broken. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't. I haven't read the spoilers. I haven't read what actually happened. I just heard people's response being negative in some regards. So even that is enough to make you think maybe they went that route, you know? We'll just have to see. I guess we'll just have to do a freaking Let's Play. uh... Yeah. God, it's so soon. It's just over two weeks away. Well, I guess we'll wrap up this uh, live reaction then. Mm Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, yeah, if you're here, thanks for watching. Let us know what you guys think about Last of Us Part 2 if you're excited to play. I'm hoping day one we're we're ready to go. That'd be great. Really hoping that. All right. Thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you guys next time. On the next one. (laughs) 